Hi, today we are going to discuss process costing. So we are using the uh, PowerPoint presentation from Cost Accounting Foundations and Evolutions of Kimi and Rayford. So these are the learning objectives. And uh, the first thing we're going to do is to differentiate job order costing and process costing. So basically, uh, as what we have discussed in class, job order costing is used uh, when the company is producing small quantities of distinct products or services. And then what we do is we basically assign the direct material, direct labor, and overhead cost to job. And then um, after determining the total cost of the job, we assign it to the number of units within the job itself. But for process costing, this is used, process costing is used whenever we manufacture large quantities of homogeneous products and services. So when we say homogeneous, um, these are uh, units that are entirely the same or if, they, if there are um, customization, uh, very little customization. So a perfect example of this is um, the pancit canton or the noodles, diba? Whenever uh, Lucky Me or Nissin manufacture these noodles, um, all the raw materials are the same, especially for the noodle, it's the noodle itself. So, um, saan lang nagkakatalo or when, uh, syempre, if you will produce, for example, the original, you will, you will uh, include a different flavor, flavor packet inside the pack and then you will use a different packaging, which is the yellow one. Tapos if you if you will produce the chili mansi, you will also include another flavor packet, the other flavor packet rather, and then um, place it inside the, uh, a different packaging as well. So if there if there is customization, very little lang, hindi siya masyadong malaki. So in process costing, what we do is we use an averaging technique. And then we assign cost directly to units produced during the period. So, here. So, again, um, we we use averaging technique to assign cost to units produced. Diba? So, basically, we compute for the unit cost first. Diba? Remember in... Um, in job order costing, the first thing we determine is the total cost of the job, as mentioned earlier. But in process costing, we determine the unit cost for each product cost, meaning unit cost for the materials, unit cost for the um, direct labor, and a unit cost for the overhead as well. Okay? So the unit cost is computed as production cost divided by the production quantity. So we'll discuss the component of this for each component of the formula as we go along. Okay? So the production cost, this is our numerator in our formula, right? So um, basically, what we do here is we accumulate cost by department. So just like in job order costing, it is also possible that we have multiple departments in process costing. Diba? And then, we also accumulate cost by product. Um, of course, the direct material cost or the direct material will come from material requisitions. And the direct labor will uh, come from the time timesheets and wage rates. And yung overhead natin may be uh, the actual or the predetermined application rates. Okay? So this is a this is a diagram, diba? This is a diagram or an illustration. So for this company, for this company, manufacturing company, we have two departments, the processing department and the packaging department. So the first department is the processing department wherein uh, we start with we start with the material requisition. And then, that's that. Once the material requisition is already prepared, that's the time that the warehouse will issue raw materials to the processing department. Okay, and then um, the raw materials will be converted into finished goods or into um, will sorry the raw materials will be converted, diba, By adding direct labor and factory overhead. So, eto ano ba yung product niya? Product A is Ano ba to? Hindi ko ma... Ano kung ano to? Anyway, this is can... Uh, yung candle in a... 
in a glass and then ito candle lang na at so ito pala candlesticks pala to this one is candle in a glass and then this one is yung malalaking kandila natin and then after that di ba product a product a sorry the processing department produces three different products di ba and then after after the after uh, the processing department is finished with product A, it will be transferred to the next department, which is the packaging department. So in the packaging department, diba, we need to add direct labor and factory overhead as well to products, to products A, B, and C. And then after they are processed in the packaging department, that's the time that they are transferred to the finished goods warehouse. Okay? So there. So, this is an example of a materials requisition form. Diba? So, um, this is an example of an employee time sheet. And there. Now, for the our denominator, for our denominator, we are going to use the number of units produced. Diba? So, the number of units produced is a little bit complicated than the computation of the number of units produced. Um, in process costing is a little bit complicated diba? by because we have the work in process or the goods work in process beginning as well as the work in process end so diba, we define work in process as the goods that we have already started but not yet finished diba? so for the work in process beginning these are the units started last period and completed in the current period okay and then for our ending work in process um, units, these are units started this period and are not completed as of the end of the period. So, in process costing, we usually compute in terms of months, no? So, beginning of the month, end of the month, okay? So, what we do is we convert partially completed units to equivalent whole units, okay? So, I will explain further later, okay? So, actually, the denominator that we use, di ba, sabi natin kanina, the denominator is the production quantity. But specifically, the denominator that we use is what we call, sorry, is what we call the equivalent units of production. So basically, the EUP is an approximation of the number of whole units of output that could have been produced from the actual effort expended. Okay? So this includes units started last period and finished this period. Tapos, uh, includes started and units started and finished this period and then it also includes units um, started this period and not finished okay so basically we assume the FIFO physical flow through the production department so we'll discuss the difference between FIFO and weighted average later on okay so, yeah, so to explain further diba, ito yan. this is a very good illustration diba? So, at the beginning of period 1, at the beginning of period 1, um, all direct materials and some direct labor overhead costs incurred for the partially completed candle. So, meron tayong kandila na hindi pa natatapos. Okay? And then, during and at the end of period 2, diba? So, this, these candles are not yet done. Hindi pa siya tapos as of the beginning of period 1. So, during period 2 during period 2 syempre we will start we will start the period by working or by finishing these candles that we haven't finished last period kasi nga first in first out tayo eh. when we say first in first out whatever you have started first you will finish uh when whatever you have started first yun yung una mong tatapusin okay so pagdating mo ng period 2 kung ano yung hindi mo natapos dito yun yung gagawin mo ngayon dito. So, sabi dyan, additional direct labor and overhead cost incurred to finish partially completed candles. And at the same time, during period 2, you will also start working on, you will also start working uh, on new candles. ba? Kasi hindi naman pwedeng yun lang gagawin mo buong, yung mga hindi mo lang natapos last period, yung ipoproduce mo for the, for the current period. So what you will do here is you will um is you will um start and finish some of the units as depicted by these yellow candles. So yung blue natin, these are the 
units that we have started last period and finished this period. Tapos yung yellow naman, these are the units that we have started this period and also completed this period. Now, ito, finally, um, all direct material and some direct labor and overhead uh, to begin other candles. So, itong red candles naman natin, ito yung ano natin, ito yung mga units na sinimulan mo ng period 2 pero unfortunately, inabutan ka ulit ng cut-off which is, let's say, the end of the month, di ba? So, dahil inabutan ka ng cut-off, it is possible that you haven't finished these units as well. So, ito yung ending work in process mo as of the end of period 2 and this will be your beginning work in process during the peri during period 3, at the start of period 3. Ganun siya. Okay? So, medyo nakakalito na onte, no? Pero, ano naman, uh, later on, when we compute, medyo, mas, hopefully, mas maintindihan niya na siya. Okay? So, uh, in process costing kasi, um, the company can opt to use the weighted average method or the first in, first out method. So, what is the difference between the two? Pag, Sinabi natin first in first out method kasi bukod dun sa assumption that what as a, assumption natin in manufacturing that whatever you have not finished in the previous period will be the ones that you will uh, will be the ones that you will uh, start working with in the next period bukod yun doon okay so pag sinabi kasi natin FIFO ba we are very specific with the the accounting for the cost Diba? So, kung mapapansin nyo dito sa box na to, um, we trace specifically the cost of the units of the beginning work in process inventory. Kaya nga nakahiwalay siya, ba? Alam mo specifically, magkano yung naging cost nitong mga blue candles na to na nanggaling pa ng nakaraang period. And then, syempre, we also trace the specific cost of the units that we have started and completed this month. And, the cost of the ending inventory, ending work in process inventory. So, paano siya ginagawa later on? Pag nagsagot tayo ng problem, makikita nyo na, ah, oo nga, natitrace specifically yung cost nung beginning work in process inventory. And then, for the weighted average method naman, from the term itself, di ba? You say, weighted average, it doesn't matter kung saan nang galing yung units, di ba? As long as you have you have manufactured or you have worked on the units this month or this period, talo-talo na sa cost niya. Diba? So, halo-halo na siya. Okay? Ayan po. So, ayan na. Ito yung sinasabi ko sa inyo. So, for the weighted average method, uh, we combine the beginning work in process at saka yung current period production kasi nga, we don't care. We don't want to trace it anymore. Diba? And then, for the first in, first out method, we separate the two. We separate the tracking of the cost incurred for the beginning work in process and the current uh, period production. Okay? So, again. So, we have the following. Okay? Um, ito yung ano, um, ano yung percent percent na yan? Basically, this percentage po, this is yung tinatawag natin na work done this month or work done for the current period. So, under the weighted average, um, the beginning work in process inventory and the unit started and completed or started and finished for the period is automatically assigned a work done this month of 100%. Okay? And then, yung ending work and process naman natin, syempre, you have to uh, consider ilang percent na ba siya completed. Okay? And then, for FIFO, diba, very specific tayo. Diba, the beginning work and process inventory, we uh, we do not assign a work done of 100% for the beginning work and process inventory. Ang ginagawa natin dyan is that we, we really, we specifically trace, diba, ilang percent ba yung ginawa natin for the beginning work and process inventory this period. Okay? And then, ang 100% lang lagi is the unit started and finished or started and completed. And for the ending work and process, same naman sila ng treatment pag sa weighted average. Diba? Um, we also trace kung ilang percent na yung nakompleto natin. So, pag 
kung mapapansin ninyo, the main difference between the weighted average and FIFO, equivalent units of production, stems from the fact that uh, we have a different treatment for the beginning work in process inventory. Kasi nga, dito sa weighted average, 100% siya lagi. Whereas kapag ka sa FIFO, very specific ka, ilang percent lang ba yung nagawa. So, dun siya nagkakatalo. Okay? So, of course, even if we are already discussing process costing, diba, the product costs are still the same. We still have direct materials, direct labor, and overhead. So, yung direct materials natin may be added at the beginning, during, and or at the end of the process. So, a perfect example of this, yung kandila na, pinag, na ginawang example ganina. Of course, if you are working or if you are manufacturing candles, diba, what is the main raw material for candles. Number one is the wick or yung mitcha, diba? And then you also have the wax itself, okay? So, if you are manufacturing, for example, yun nga, kandila, diba? The wick will be added at the beginning of the process. Kasi nga, hindi mo naman pwedeng pag yung wax, hot wax na yun, nabuo na siya or tumigas na, diba? Hindi mo naman sosot yung, yung mitcha or yung wick, hindi mo naman sisiksik. Diba? So, kailangan, at the start pa lang, nakaporma na yung wick na yon or yung mitcha. Okay? So, yun yung example of a direct material that is added at the beginning. Actually, yung wax din naman eh. Pagkalagay mo ng, pagkalagay mo ng mitcha, you can easily pour in the hot wax. Tapos, papatuyuin mo na lang siya. Tapos na agad yun. Okay? Pero, o oh, sige, bigay tayo na example ng iba. Pero what if, for example, you are manufacturing a candle na may different colors. For example, yung lower la lower layer niya. Dalawang layer na lang. Sige. Kung nga rin pang Pasko, yung sa baba, let's say, red. And then, yung sa taas na portion, let's say, green. Diba? So, dahil liquid yon and mainit siya, what will happen? Diba? You cannot add the green and the red wax at the same time. What will you do? You will add the wick. Tapos, ipopor mo muna yung red. For example, red yun nasa baba. And then, you will wait until such time na matuyo na siya or magsettle yung red na wax na pinor mo. And then, that's the time that you will pour the green wax. Diba? Tapos, maghihintay ka ulit para matuyo na siya. And then, sa dulo, pwede mo siyang lagyan ng ribbon or lalagyan mo siya ng kung ano man kasi pang regalo nga. Diba? So, that is a perfect example of a direct material that is not simply added at the beginning. Kasi it is possible that the wick, sorry, yeah, wick and the red wax is added to, are added at the beginning. And then, for example, the green wax is added at 60% completion. And then, yung ribbon naman natin will be added at the end of the process. So, pwedeng ganun rin. Okay? So, um, for direct labor and overhead, actually, we assume, of course, we assume that uh, direct labor and overhead are added evenly throughout the process. So, basically, ang ginagawa natin dito is that when the problem says that the finished, the beginning work in process is already 60% complete, oh, hindi, wag beginning, sorry. Uh, if the problem states that the ending work in process is already 60% complete, it means that the 60%, diba, 60% pertains to the product's completion as to labor and overhead. Yun siya lagi. Kasi nga added evenly throughout the process. Eh. Bakit ganun? Bakit laging ganun ang assumption natin? Kasi nga, again, cost-benefit. ba? Usually, pag-process costing tayo, the manufacturing process is already automated. And therefore, you cannot specifically identify anymore kung kailan nadagdag yung direct labor, kailan mo ba talaga in yung overhead, unlike yung sa materials. So, yun na lang yung nagiging assumption, di ba? Na direct labor and overhead are added evenly throughout the process. Okay? So, ayan. Ito pala. Um, ito pala example, no? So, again, kandila, wicks, and beeswax are added. 100% complete na siya. Di ba? Tapos, labor and overhead is at 5%. Ibig sabihin, at 5% completion, tsaka mo dinalagay yung wick, tsaka yung beeswax. Tapos, 
following incent are added 100% at 20% completion. So, pwede rin ganun kasi kung scented, scented candle ka nga. And then, wax poured into molds, labor and overhead at 65% completion. And then, at 80%, Candles are removed from molds and polished to remove seams. Labor and overhead is also at 80% completion. And then finally, at 100%, candles are placed in boxes. Uh, box yung material natin, 100% complete na siya. Labor and overhead is also 100% complete. So, ayan po. Okay. So, these are the steps, no? Whenever we solve for process costing problems. The first step, number one, is to compute for the units to account for. Okay? Units to account for. And then second, is to compute for the units accounted for. And for the third, we have to determine the equivalent units of production. Fourth, compute for the cost to account for. Tapos, fifth is to compute cost per equivalent unit. And last, we have to assign cost to inventories okay so the first three steps is for the num for the units itself and then yung four to six naman natin four to six step is uh parang ano siya assigning of cost na okay so this is the cost of production report diba so the units to account for ito units accounted for as well as the eup for each cost tapos sige later na yan so, ito muna tayo. Let us discuss this. Uh, let us discuss the first step. Diba? So, the first step is to compute for the units to account for. So, the units to account for is simply the sum of the beginning work in process inventory, number of units in the beginning work in process inventory, and the number of units you have started this period or for the current month. Yun lang siya. You simply have to add. Yun na yung units to account for natin. So, again, the units accounted for natin. Ay, ay, sorry. Mali, ano to? Ayun, sorry. Mali, balik. Ito pala tayo. The units to account for is simply the sum of the beginning work in process, number of units in the beginning work in process, and the number of units we have started this month. So, yun yung units to account for natin. So, step two is to compute for the units accounted for, diba? So, this is our computation, diba, ng units to account for. Meaning, yun yung hahanapin mo eh. When you say units to account for, you have to know ano nangyari sa kanya, saan siya napunta, diba? After, after, after the period or after the month, saan siya napunta. Yun yung units accounted for natin. So, o, oh, eto siya. Um... Ang nangyari dyan is that, ano nangyari? 203 units were finished and, and transferred to finished goods. And then, 2,700 units are still in process as of the end of the period. Ending work in process siya. So, yung units accounted for natin, 205,700 din. So, yan. Again, it the units to account for and the units accounted for must be equal. Pag hindi sila equal, may losses ka. So, we'll discuss losses later on. Kasama rin siya. How do you account for the losses? Diba? So, ganun siya. Pero as a rule, at the start, syempre, um, the units to account for as well as the units accounted for must always be equal. Kasi doon mo malalaman eh. Kung parang hinahanap mo na, oh, Ito yung sinimulan ko. Ito yung meron ako for the period. Saan nagpunta to? Saan siya nakarating? So, 203,000 units were finished. Yung 2,700 na iwanan pa sa ending work in process inventory ko. Okay? So, step 3. We have to compute for the equivalent units of production. Okay? Oops, sorry. Ito tayo. We have to compute for the equivalent units. So, paano siya ginagawa? Ba? So, again, we assume the use of the weighted average method. So, ito, ano lang to ha, wala talaga siyang specific problem pa. Anyway, I will answer siguro a couple of problems later on to illustrate the concepts naman din. 
Sige. So for the beginning work in process inventory, di ba, we have what? Um, two, uh, since weighted average method tayo, if you will remember earlier, um, pagdating sa beginning work in process and the unit started and completed uh, for the period, di ba, we always assign a work done of 100%. Okay? We always assign a work done of 100%. Kaya nga, balik natin dito. Yung, um, to, 200, ay, nasan ba? This one. Beginning, 5,000, di ba? Yung beginning natin is 5,000. And then, yung started and completed na 198,000 is computed as the difference between 203,000, which is yung finished and transferred units natin, Minus the beginning work in process inventory. Again, physically, we assume the use of the first in, first out method. Kung ano yung sinimulan mo or kung ano yung hindi mo natapos last month, yun yung una mong tatapusin for the current period. Okay? Ulit ha, para hindi kayo malito. Hmm. Paano nakuha yung mga figures dito sa susunod? Diba? Sa susunod na slides. So, basically, the beginning work in process is already given to 5,000 5, units yan. The unit started and completed, di ba? Anong nangyari dyan? Saan nakuha itong 198 na to? This 198,000 is, uh, is computed by deducting 5,000 from the number of units we have transferred to finished goods, which is 203. So, 203 minus 5,000 that is equal to 198,000. And then, the ending work in process naman is 2,700 units given din yan. Okay? So, ano nangyari? Um, sorry, balik. Ang assumption dito, wala kasing binigay eh, no? Pero, the assumption here is that materials are added at the start of the process. And then, look at, uh, look at the set, uh, the third column, ba? For the direct materials, we have a separate, um, a separate computation for the equivalent units. Pero we lump the labor and overhead into a single, a single, um, single, uh, kumbaga, title, diba? Which is the conversion cost. Kasi nga, same naman siya, eh, added evenly throughout the process. So, we can save time, diba? So, since 100% din yung work done natin for the beginning work in process inventory and the unit started and completed, diba? So, we have 5,000 times 100% that is equal to 5,000. And then, started and completed, we have 198,000 times 100% that is equal to um, 198,000 as well. Now, for the ending work in process inventory, we go back to our previous slide, diba? Sabi kasi natin dito, saan na ba yun? Medyo malayo na. Yan. Ito. Diba sabi natin, pag weighted average, ito yung ginagawa natin eh, yung weighted average. Pag beginning work in process, tsaka, start, tsaka started and finished, diba? 100% siya. But the ending work in process, hindi natin ina-assume lah lagi na 100% siya. We consider the percentage that we have completed this month. So, balikan natin yung um, slide kanina. Medyo malayo lang. Sorry. Okay. So, ano nangyari sa kanya ngayon? Diba? For materials, ma'am, but yung materials 100% pa rin. Kasi nga, again, materials are assumed to be added at the start of the process. So, if you have started the ending work Siyempre, the ending work in process inventory, ano ba description sa kanya? These are the units that we have started this month but not yet completed as of the end of the period. So, kailan mo siya sinimulan? This month. Kailan mo nalagay yung materials sa kanya? This month then. So, 100% yung work done natin sa kanya. Okay? But for the ending units, anong sabi dyan? Ang percent complete lang daw niya is 80%. That's why... Yung 2,700 units multiplied by 80%, doon nakuha po yung 2,160. And then you add, you add, you add everything. We have an equivalent unit of production na 205,700 for direct materials. And 
205,160 for direct labor. Ganyan mag-compute ng EUP. At the start, nakakalito talaga siya. I mean, um, aminado naman kami doon. That, that, at the start talaga, you will be a little bit confused. Pero, you need practice. Talaga magpa-practice kayo how to compute for EUP. Okay? So, we proceed to step 4, which is the cost to account for. No? So, for the cost to account for, usually, binibigay ito sa atin magkano ba yung mga cost natin. Diba? So, yung direct material and conversion cost ng beginning work in process natin as well as the current cost are given in the problem. Usually, ha? So, basically, to compute for the cost to account for, all you need to do is to compute for the total cost. Total ng beginning work in process cost natin um, as far as direct material and conversion and then current cost for direct material and conversion as well. So in this case, the total cost to account for is 1,004,091. So just like what we did earlier, di ba? Pag nandun ka na sa cost accounted for, dapat yung cost accounted for mo must be equal to 1,004,091 as well. Kasi kung hindi siya equal, may nawawala. Di ba? You need to look, to look for it. Okay? So, step 5 is to compute for the cost per equivalent unit. Again, we are using the weighted average method. Okay? So, for the weighted average method, basically, um, what we do is we just add diba, the direct material cost of the beginning work in process units and the current cost of direct materials. So, 32763 divided by the EUP we have computed in step number 3. Diba? So, pag divide mo siya, we, we will get 1.59. So, that is our cost per EUP as far as direct materials is concerned. Same process for conversion. So, whatever the conversion cost assigned to the beginning work in process inventory units will be added to the current period cost for conversion and then divided by the EUP for conversion which we have computed for um, in step number 3 rather. So we'll get 3.3. So each completed unit, diba? each unit that you have completed, yung cost niya is 4.89. Ganun siya. Okay? So last step, this is the assignment of cost to inventories. Okay? So sige, tingnan natin to. Okay. So now, ba? Again, um, hindi na ako mag-backtrack, but the number of units completed is already 203,000 units multiplied by 4.89 which we have computed in step number 5. So we have 992,670. And then, we also have to compute for the cost of our ending work in process inventory. So, for our direct materials, the equivalent units of production is 2,7, ba? Multiplied by our cost per EUP for direct material, which is 1.59, will get 4,293. For conversion naman, ba? Bakit siya multiply by 80%? Remember, that is the completion. Kung ilan yung ginawa natin for this month, ba? So, 2,7 times 80%. I think this is, ito yata yung 2,160 kanina. 2160 times 3.3 will get 7,128. So the total cost of the ending work in process inventory uh, is 11,421. So if you add the cost assigned to the uh, transferred out units and the cost assigned to the ending work in process inventory, we'll get a total of 1,004,091, which is... Ano ba to? Yan. Must agree with the cost to account for in step number 4. So, let us check. 1,004,091. Kung pareho ba sila. Yeah. So, we go back to step number 4. Yun. Pareho naman. 1,004,091. Andun siya. Okay. So, ayan. We're done. So, tapos na tayo kung weighted average. 
So, it is another story kapag ka first in, first out naman tayo or FIFO. So, ano yung mga tatanong sa inyo dito? O, how much is the total cost transferred out? Or how much is the total cost of the of the units transferred out to finish goods inventory? So, your answer is 992,670. Tatanungin kayo, how much is the cost of the ending work in process inventory for the period? 11,421. Sim, pwede rin kayong tanungin, how much is the... Uh, Uh, what is the EUP for materials for the current month? O, ano yung EUP for materials? Siyempre, you have to go back dun sa computation ng EUP natin kanina in step number 3, which is 205,700. EUP for conversion, 205,160. So, medyo madaming tanong na pwedeng gawin. Kasi nga, this, you have 6 steps. Ang dami mo rin pagdadaanan na steps naman bago mo matapos yung computation. So, ayun siya. Okay? Sige. Teka. We'll check the PowerPoint kung ano pang meron dito. Okay? Ayan. Five po naman tayo. So, sige. Um, I'll stop here and then maybe I will just use an actual problem to illustrate the FIFO process costing. Kasi medyo FIFO is a little bit complicated than weighted average. So, baka lalo lang kayong malito kung gamitin natin itong mga figures na to and then wala kayong hindi kayo nakaharap sa problem talaga, sa given sa problem. So, um, again, I will upload several uh, several problems. Diba? I will answer several problems for process costing para mas maintindihan. And you also have to study on your own. Read the book. Kasi that, that would be a big help para sa inyo. Okay? Thank you.